Hi, I'm Mike Morrissey. Welcome to The Other 1%, my series of videos about homelessness. Over 1% of Americans are homeless or precariously housed. For the past few years, I've been documenting homeless people, formerly homeless, and the people who are helping them, letting them tell their own stories. My interest in the disenfranchised dates back to the, my student days and a project I did creating a playground for inner city kids in Buffalo, New York. Later, I worked for the United Nations in Southeast Asia as part of a team overseeing the development of refugee camps along the Thai-Cambodian border. I'm intimately familiar with what happens when people are displaced, when they no longer have homes. I've seen how it changes everything, relationships, their health and safety, and how difficult it is to cope with their uncertain future. These issues cannot be addressed until they have a home. That feeling when I first walked into the house, that I was like, oh my God, I have a place to call home again. And I remember feeling the psychological burden be lifted from me. Now all of a sudden I had access to parts of my brain, parts of my emotions that I was blocking during the bout of homelessness because um, you're so vulnerable when you're in that situation and your stress levels are so high that your mindset switches from abundant mindset to just, I just wanna survive. Because when I was on the streets, I was hustling to make money. I was like selling things on the streets, putting myself in dangerous situations. Um, I had a gun pulled on me. Um, I was, had near death experiences. So I remember once I was able to just lay my head on my bed, it was just like the beginning of the healing process to start feeling like a human being again. So, yeah, my family eventually recovered. Uh, now they, they started their own business 10 years later and were thriving again. But we were privileged. We were very fortunate because if we didn't have that one person who was willing to just sign his name on the paper, I don't know where my family would be right now. I don't know where I would be right now. So, yeah. Um, so I am a hip hop artist and spoken word poet. If life's a poem, then experience the metaphor. If words aren't symbols, then what are all these letters for? Homelessness is a result of changes to our culture, our politics, and our economy. Everyone wants to see an end to homelessness, especially the homeless. My shift came after meeting Russell Grant Appling. Russell is a homeless man who carries around a small white teepee that is his shelter. My curiosity was piqued when I learned not only does he have email and Facebook accounts, but he's a card-carrying member of the Screen Actors Guild. Meeting Russell, began my journey into the world of homelessness and documentary work. After meeting Russell, I realized I needed to meet more homeless people to get a more complete story. The challenge was, I'm not someone who can walk up to a total stranger and ask them to share their life story. I needed intermediaries who are known and trusted to help me reach out into this community. There are many people who have helped me, both in understanding the complexities of homelessness as well as making introductions. You will meet them in the videos. But here, I'd like to acknowledge the people who have helped me get started. Dr. Gifford Boyce Smith, Eileen Richardson, Jennifer Friedenbach, and Laura Guzman. In particular, I'd like to thank Dr. David Elliott Lewis, who continues to guide me through this process. He's taught me to listen and set aside my assumptions. He's also explained how a conversation about homelessness is incomplete without the inclusion of mental illness. Sure, there are some who exploit the system. Unfortunately, they are in the minority, but I've created a majority perception. So it was a, it was a question about transitioning out, and so yeah. it wasn't that you went specific to a program you just recognized. Well, I, I mean, Working with the street team and working with the people that were involved at that time gave me the opportunity to find the resources that I need within the community to get the help I need. That would be with drug and alcohol, that would be with mental health. Um, I had a lot of mental health issues that went along with all of this. For me, the loss of my daughter was a very big mental health, the loss of my business, the loss of my children, so I became very self-destructive connecting with the street team, not only just with the employees of the street team, but being held accountable to another teammate sometimes is more valuable 
than a case manager. You know, my teammates expected me to be there because we were a team. And the only way we got this goal done was to show up and be accountable. The stories I've listened to were complex and daunting. Yet early on, I saw a pattern. It always seemed that each of them talked about a traumatic event that gave them a sense of hopelessness. It started with depression and eventually spiraled down into despair. So a discussion about homelessness really is incomplete without including mental illness. Nice around timing and stuff, and you're coming out of a very chaotic life. So it's hard to just go from black to white immediately. And mm -hmm. I'll give like an example of my situation. I tried many times to get a job when I was becoming more and more homeless. Um, my dad was suffering from a mental illness and we had just moved here. He didn't know anyone. So I was on my own with um, dealing with him. And I would have a job at Whole Foods or I'd be going to school and he never goes to sleep on time. So if I wake up in the morning and I accidentally wake him up because it's a small apartment, suddenly things are getting thrown and the police are there and I'm not at work anymore. And so it's very hard to adjust. In some cases, a person becomes homeless due to their mental illness. Others become mentally ill due to their homelessness. Treating folks as adults, not putting a lot of rules in the place, but yet putting a, a ladder of success that they can climb as fast as they would like, just like the real world. And coming in um, in the beginning only needing to be 18 years old. That's it. We don't care about anything else. Come in to a meeting, sit there, um, sign up, and then show up the next morning at 8 a.m. and try it again the next day and try it again the next day. Um, before you know it, they start saying, I can, I can do this. I can work again. And people always say, how do you get them jobs? It's like, we don't have to get them jobs. You just have to just give them an environment without being judged at the front end where they can work hard to change their circumstance. Yeah, one mm -hmm. of my favorite, I think, is probably Connie, uh, who now works for the city of Palo Alto. Um, a full-bred, you know, city guy. He was in the construction industry, um, and then after the dot-com uh, bubble burst, he uh, found himself living in East Palo Alto, and then um, on the streets, and then he was, was working downtown, you know, side by side with the city workers. And before you knew it, um, he, how many times did he apply for that job? Do you know? It was over the course of a couple of years. Years, yeah. 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 yeah, it was many, many times, but uh, finally they picked him. The program now has over 650 people that have moved on um, either into jobs mm -hmm. or have got off the streets into housing. Another pattern I saw was in how homelessness ended for some with volunteering. Volunteering is a start and a way out. The opportunity to help others restores their dignity, self-respect, and gives them a purpose. The downtown streets team is an excellent example of how this works. Welcome everyone to our Wednesday meeting. As you guys might know, we run a work experience team here in San Jose, where we're in the community, beautifying the community, beautifying the gateways, the downtown, the east side. We're all over San Jose, and we're beautifying it in exchange for basic needs stipends, also case management support from this wonderful staff right here, Nadia, case manager, Chris, our employment specialist, Caitlin, our employment specialist. We had two work experience contracts, today we have seven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have 90 folks who have found housing since then. 90 folks just from this team who have found housing since then. Right. Homelessness is a complicated subject that too often is reduced to simple characterizations. The homeless are not one unified group. I was looking at it as an issue but listening to their stories changed my perception. I, I, would, I would have appreciated more empathy or even just more thought because that consideration reminds me that I am human. And yeah, a lot of people associate homelessness with not being human. And that's the number one thing we need. Listening to Emily's story gave me an idea about reacting to people on the street. What if the next time we see a person on the street, instead of looking away, we look them in the eye and just say hi? It's a shift. I think it's a perfect storm 
Yeah, uh, and I believe point. that there's there's many uh, in life. One thing I've realized is that um, there's never uh, there t it takes more than just one thing to make a situation a situation. Situation's very complex and life's very complex. And the more we try to simplify it by, you know, is it this or is it? Um, then the more we're not really paying attention to the fact that H O is actually addressing all these things mm -hmm. and that is why it's multifaceted that's why it's 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 able to be it's customizable in a manner of speaking homelessness is a growing economic environmental health and social problem we have developed a new economic class of citizens poorer than poor resulting in homelessness if we're going to reduce the homeless population, we must bridge the gap between the haves and the have-nots. That is going to require coordination, collaboration, and understanding. Engaging those who are homeless, having them as part of the team that solves homelessness. Employing and embracing the idea of human-centered design. Okay, my name is Dave Romary. And uh, I had an idea while I was uh, volunteering at um, Loaves and Fishes at InVision. And the idea was if we had a location where we could grow vegetables, it would be beneficial to Loaves and Fishes. And ended up uh, finding Goodwill. And Goodwill was kind enough to offer a, a facility that did a uh, uh, that uh, uh, provided a kitchen, a dining room, and uh, and lo and behold, a, a wonderful plot back there. And we were able to get materials uh, donated. Can you tell us a little bit about the people that work in the garden? Who works here? Uh, we have uh, various people, groups, um, high school kids, um, streets teams. But uh, no, yeah, I, um, I mean, I just enjoy being out here in the morning. It's just a wonderful place to be, you know. Um, I uh, I get a lot of support. In Are you all out of the jungle or formerly lived in the jungle? Yes. Yes. Right. So yes. all three of you lived in the jungle? Yes. Yes. You know, volunteering out here is just a small, uh, you know, a small uh, way that I give back, you know. It inspires me, you know, to just come back every day. It's just a blessing that downtown street team is, you know what I'm saying, um, collaborating with um, the city, I guess. Um, Loaves and fishes, yeah. and loaves and fishes. As far as um, I mean, as far as the volunteering thing is, you know, what I'm saying it, it's a beautiful thing. Thank you for taking the time to watch these videos. To learn about those, we label homeless. Check back as I will continue to add more material. This series began as my search into the world of homelessness, and it continues. Thank you.